premier swing band. My favorite part of their bio is they say they're available for weddings, events, dances, house parties, and other jazz-inspired shenanigans. If there was ever a place, if there was ever a time that needed jazz-inspired shenanigans, it's right now. These are the guys that are going to provide it. Joe Smith and the Spicy Pickles. Joe Smith and the Spicy Pickles. It's a big room, huh? Well, welcome to the brine. We hope you're all ready to get pickled with us this afternoon. Yeah. How many have not seen us before? Most of the room. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. We're happy to be here all the way from Denver, Colorado. We uh, made that 13-hour drive yesterday. It was a lot of fun. And uh, we're really excited to be in one place for a little bit. So, uh, the first tune was a good old classic, the theme song of the Count Basie Orchestra, the One O'Clock Jump. Uh, next up, we're going to do a tune that was recorded in about 1938. Uh, the original recording was uh, Barney Biggard, and I believe that Duke Ellington was on this record as well. Uh, this is called Drummer's Delight.
Thank you, that was Braxton Conn on those drums. That was called Drummer's Delight. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, we're really excited to be here. This is our very first time. Um, if you don't know me, I'm actually originally from Iowa. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been out in Denver for almost six years now, but uh, the Bix Festival was actually the very first festival that I ever attended back in 2011. So, yeah, so this is kind of, it's really nice to come home and be, be a part of this. We're really excited. Uh, we have a lot of fun things for you. Uh, this next tune is going to feature Matt Bouchard on the tenor saxophone. This is an old Illinois jacquette tune that comes from 1946. This is called Illinois Goes to Chicago. Thank you. 
Richard on that tenor saxophone. Yeah, now we're going to bring up our wonderful enchantress of song for you. Her name is Molly Collier. This is, uh, we're going to play a good old tune for you. This was made famous by Chick Webb and Ella Fitzgerald back in 1937-1938, right in there. Uh, this is a good old Colorado classic. This is called When I Get Low, I Get High. Next up, we're going to play a good old love tune for you. Um, so if you're kind of catching the drift a little bit, we specialize especially in like 1930s and 1940s swing music. Um, but we're going to play a good old love tune. This is a Jimmy McHugh number. Um, this is called Exactly Like You. Exactly like you. Why should we spend money 
on a show or two. Why? No one does those love scenes exactly like you. Exactly like you. You make me feel so grand. I want to hand the world to you. You seem to understand each fool's little dream I dream, scheme I scheme. I know why my mother, why? she taught me to be true. Why? She met me for someone exactly like you. Take it back. You make me feel so grand I want to hand the world to you You seem to understand Each fool's little dream I dream Scheme I scheme I know why my mother She taught me to be true She met me for someone exactly like you Take it home Exactly like you. So you've noticed we're uh, we're some pretty good-looking, handsome young men, aren't we? Yeah. So the newest member of the band, let me tell you, he's about to go into high school. So our wonderful guitar player, Mr. Alex, I, I'm I'm being facetious. I do apologize. He literally just graduated college a year ago. He is 23 now. He just turned 23. So, how about a hand for Alex? Yeah. You're gonna get to see him shred on that guitar this weekend and it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. Uh, so, we're gonna feature him on this next tune. This was originally recorded by Charlotte Christian and Benny Goodman. Uh, this is a fun little tune called A Smooth One.
that was Alex Heffron on that guitar. That was a call of a smooth one. Yeah. So we're really excited to be here. And man, these 45 minute sets, they just get away from you, don't they? Uh, so we got a couple more tunes for you. We're gonna play a nice traditional jazz number next. Um, we do want to let you know that we do have some CDs for sale. Um, they're gonna be back there, obviously. Um, our latest CD is Gin and Moonlight, and that actually features Jeff Barnhart on the piano as well on all of the album. So we highly recommend taking that home because then you get to take us and Jeff home. And what's better than that? I can't think of anything, Joe. Exactly. Uh, we also do, if you've ever wondered how good a musician cooks, we also have some barbecue sauce for sale that I make. Yes, yes. You need to try this. Uh, I promise it's FDA approved. It is legally bottled in a, in a bottling facility. It's not like I'm just throwing this in a pot in my kitchen. This is a legitimate company. So uh, we'd love for you to check that out. It's a really wonderful like mustard vinegar base. Uh, it's almost like a honey mustard up front. I could talk about food all day, but we won't. Um, so this next tune is a good old tune. This is called uh, Coquette. Thank you. 
Maggie was called, Little Coquette. Yeah. Cool. So, we love that 1930s and 1940s sound, but we're hoping you're gonna be okay if we kind of push the bounds a little bit. Maybe. We'll see, right? Uh, this tune is really forward thinking. It comes from, you ready for this? Ready. 1962. Yeah. This was uh, written by Johnny Hodges. Johnny Hodges played uh, alto sax with the Duke Ellington band. Uh, on the original record, it featured Al Sears on that tenor sax. But Al couldn't be here today, and he asked for us to call Matt instead. So this is going to feature Matt Bashar, as well as pretty much everybody else in the band. This is a fun little tune. Thank you. 
Thank you. 
there was uh, uh, some of those some of those licks were uh, actually originated by Bix, and and the reason that we play them to this that Barry chooses to play some of those licks to this day is because nobody ever figured out how to do it better. You know, how can you improve on on perfection? So that was uh, that was a, a great an honor to do that tune. Here's a tune, a really popular tune. Uh, it's either called Nobody's Sweetheart Now, which is the way that sheet music was published, or Nobody, you, or Nobody's Sweetheart was the way that sheet music was published, but it's also known as Nobody's Sweetheart Now, or You're Nobody's Sweetheart Now. Everybody's recorded in a bunch of different ways, but uh, we're gonna play it uh, <laughs> the only way we can. So here's uh, 1924. You're nobody's sweetheart now.
for his sweetheart now. Some years ago we played in a little town called Chillicothe in Missouri. We were doing fine with the audience until somebody showed up that completely emptied the audience. The Playmate of the Year showed up in her hometown that night. And that's the first time the entire audience has walked out of a New Orleans Ninja Baby concert. <laughs> Uh, 11, it's a ragtime piece by Wilbur Sweatman, who, uh, who was, as it turns out, was a close friend of Scott Joplin's, uh, you know, down in the Sedalia area in Missouri, and in fact, he was such a close friend that when uh, Joplin passed away, he made uh, Wilbur Sweatman his executor of his, his, his estate. He trusted him that much. They were good friends. This is Down Home Rag. that have been covered over and over and over and over by uh, artists, and this is one of them as it turns out. And uh, people are still, especially a lot of the swing bands today, still cover this song. And it's uh, not that complicated. It was originally uh, 
what written in 1924 by Spencer Williams, but it was recorded by Clarence Williams and his Blue Five, and Clarence Williams was in the original Red Onion Jazz Babies back in 1924. He was the leader of the band, and uh, he was uh, quite a businessman and a publisher and uh, that sort of thing. He, he was, wasn't that great of a piano player, but he was really great at the business side of music, which most of us aren't. Uh, but uh, he was, and he recorded under, under his name, Clarence Williams' Blue Five. Everybody loves my baby.
before with the Wolverine Orchestra and 27. And uh, so uh, Spencer Williams actually wrote this tune, but Clarence Williams, being the businessman that we talked about, uh, he put his name on it so he could make some money off of it. You know, they were crafty that way, those ba band leaders were. So here's uh, Royal Garden Blues. Nobody could uh, deny his talent and his skill. So uh, here's one of the tunes that Jelly Roll Warren did. He did many, many. But this one is called Grandpa's Spells. And uh, if you listen to Jelly Roll play this uh, on the piano, it, it uh, has, there's a reason we call it, you know when you get a little bit older, and sometimes uh, we, when, when, when we, <laughs> what do you mean, what are you talking about? Uh, sometimes Grandpa gets a little shaky, and so, uh, here we go. Here's Grandpa's spells. <laughs> 